We all know that running a storyline campaign can be difficult from the DM's perspective, but what about the players? Sure, they don't have to develop the campaign, but they do have to juggle multiple story threads at once. That's where Forian's quest log comes in. It's been recently updated for 0.8 and provides all the features you could need for keeping track of a party's objectives. But first, why not grab some battle maps for these quests? Mad Car Tuckerer, our continuing sponsor, has just what you need. Each one of their hundreds of battle maps are built for Foundry VTT with walling, lighting, and sound. Check out the Mad Cartographer's massive catalog at the link below. Now let's get back to the quest log. As always, you can download the module by going to the module browser on Foundry's main menu, searching for it, and clicking the download button. Then head into one of your campaigns, find the Manage Modules button in the settings menu, and activate the module using the checkbox. Once the page reloads, you'll be able to access the quest log interface at the bottom of the journal tab. Let's start off by creating a quest. Here you'll want to drag over an actor, item, or journal entry to act as the quest giver. Attaching a quest to an item or actor doesn't mechanically do anything, it's just an easy way to depict who or what is providing the quest. You can also add your own custom image as the quest giver. Next, you can fill out a name and a description that the players will be able to see. Finally, once you've clicked the Add to Quest Log button, you'll have a new quest. This tab is invisible to the players, so you can create quests without the players knowing they're here. Click on your quest to edit it further. From here, you'll see some new options, starting with the Objectives area. These objectives are simple check marks that can inform players of their progress. They can be either in progress, completed, or failed. You can also reorganize the objectives and make some hidden that the players may not know about yet. The completion of these objectives can be seen at a glance in the quest log. Now for the most important part to some players, rewards. Simply go into the compendium and drag out whatever rewards you'd like to attach to the completion of the quest. These items can also be rearranged, set to be hidden, locked, and deleted. Locking an item prevents a player from clicking into an item and from dragging the item out. Finally, you can set the quest as active or available. We'll have to go into the module settings tab to understand what an available quest is. By default, there is no available tab for the players to view, but if you check this setting, it'll show up for the players. There's also a setting to allow players to accept available quests themselves. Think of the available quests tab as a place to put quests that players are aware about, but haven't decided to take up yet. Many of the other settings here determine what permissions the players have, but one more cool feature is also hidden here. If you've ever played any MMO, you'll be familiar with the quest tracker, where you can see your quests and objectives at a glance. Checking these options creates the quest tracker on screen, which will display the active quests and track the objectives on each of them. You can move the tracker around with the handle, and if you ever lose it, you can reset its position with the final settings option. Alright, so with the options out of the way, let's get back to the quest log. Head to the Manage Quest tab so you can access a few more options, such as changing permissions so that only one player may know about the patron quest, or even just a personal quest. You can add splash art to the quest to depict a location or item related to the quest, and you can even create subquests, which work exactly like normal quests except for being displayed as an objective of the main quest. It can be accessed either from the main quest's objective list or seen out in the quest log. If you're really crazy, you can even make a subquest inside of a subquest. Now that we've explored quest creation, let's quickly go over how the quest log works. Essentially, you start with an inactive quest, which can either be placed in the Available or In Progress tabs, where the players will be able to see them. Available quests can be activated by you or the players, and active quests can be further interacted with. Depending on how much control you give your players in the module settings, they may be able to accomplish tasks and take rewards from it when it's completed. As the DM, you'll probably determine when a quest is completed, and can mark it as either accomplished or failed, going to their respective tabs. These other tabs are mostly just to hold old quests that the players can refer back to, and see all the things that they've done. That's essentially all that we have with Forian's quest log. I love this module for what it does, creating a more streamlined approach to players' objectives in the world. Whether you want it for all its features, or just as a place to keep track of quests on your side of the table, you have plenty of options to fine-tune your use for it. I'm sure that every table can find some reason to use this module. I hope that you enjoyed this guide, and do let me know what you think of the module in the comments below. Huge shout out to my shout tier patrons, Unix, Darkside, Shane, Matthew Russell, Demetrius Meopenheimer Nexus, and Smoothie Buns. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.